In today's video, we're going to perfect your reels by using round, pointed, and snapped rhythms. Stay tuned. Well, hello everybody. I'm Matt Willis Bagpiper, and on this channel, I make videos to make you a stronger and more confident piper. If you like this kind of content, please like the video, subscribe below, share with any other pipers that uh, you might think could get something out of it. I also give Skype lessons if you want more personalized instruction, but more on that later. There's links below to PDF downloads of all of the music we'll be using today, so go ahead, print those out, put them on a tablet, have them in front of you so you can follow along. Reels and hornpipes, some of the most exciting music we can play on the pipes, but they can be quite challenging. One of the hardest aspects of them is they're typically played quite quickly. How do we get them up to speed and keep the accuracy in there as we do it? I've come up with a method here that I've been using with my students and I've had great success getting people to play their reels and hornpipes much more quickly, lively, yet keep them accurate and clean. The basic premise of the method is that we're going to use three different rhythms to get all of the rhythmic permutations that can happen in these types of tunes under control. Round, where the subdivided notes are all even. Pointed, where the subdivided notes are long and then short and snapped where the subdivided notes are short and then long. I used this in a previous video on High Road to Gerlach for beginners, but it's just as useful here for more advanced tunes. Now we have both a round reel and a pointed reel. The round reel is the Mason's Apron and the pointed reel is the Ale is Deer. Now I say pointed, but the tune actually has quite a few snapped rhythms where again, the first subdivided note is short and not long. But the general term I hear is pointed reels when we're talking about reels that kind of ba ba da ba da ba da ba 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 da ba da. And briefly, what's the difference between a reel and a hornpipe? Well, to be honest, not much, especially in more modern tunes. Reels are written in a la brev or cut time. That's where the half note gets the beat, and it typically is subdivided down into four eighth notes, either even eighth notes for a round reel or dotted eighth notes and sixteenth notes or sixteenth notes and dotted eighth notes for a pointed reel. A hornpipe on the other hand is written in 2-4 so the beat is a quarter note and that is being subdivided out into four sixteenth notes. That tends to be just a little bit harder to read and has a little bit more ink on the page but all of the rest of everything is just about the same. The tempos are very similar, the feel of the music is very similar, it's more how it's written. In older reels, it tended to be eight bars of music per part. So in a reel, it might be four bars repeated or eight bars not repeated. And in older hornpipes, it seemed to be 16 bars of music per part. And for hornpipes, it's almost always eight bars of music repeated. But that being said, the Mason's Apron is a reel. It's written in a la breve in all of the versions I've ever seen. And yet it's eight bars and it's repeated. So there's no hard, fast rule when it comes to how long a reel or a hornpipe is. Those are just some observations I've made over the years. If you're applying this method to a round hornpipe or a reel, it's gonna be relatively straightforward because the music you have in front of you is already written round. If you're wanting to apply this to a tune that's pointed, which has dotted and cut rhythms throughout, you're either gonna to need to take a look at it and really kind of divorce the beams and dots from it so you can just see the eighth note structure, or you might need to even rewrite it. You can use various bagpipe music programs. You can get some music staff paper and write it out by hand that way, which will help you memorize the tune. Um, but you'll need to come up with some sort of system or method to write it out so that you can see the round rhythms if you're having a hard time interpreting all the dots and cuts and, and being able to read the even notes from that. So in this method, we're going to start with it round at a very reasonable tempo, a tempo where you can control everything in the tune. Once you have a good tempo set and you can play your tune round and accurate, we're going to play it pointed. And this time I mean pointed. Every starting note in the subdivided pattern is going to be dotted and the next one cut. Bum ba da ba da ba da ba da ba da ba da. And then once you can play that, we're going to move on to snapped, where we're going to now make the first note of each subdivided grouping short. Da 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 da. I think the easiest way to demonstrate this is by playing it. We're going to start with the Mason's apron here, and we're going to put this metronome at how about. 75. But at 75, I'm actually counting right now the quarter notes, not the half notes. Now it is written in olive brev, so by counting the quarter notes here, we're actually subdividing it, which means we're counting both the down, when your foot's coming down, and the up, that exact 50% mark between the beats. In reels and hornpipes, the main 
flow and feel of the music is that subdivided into four notes per beat. Or that's a little much if we're trying to take a new tune and immediately start it. So at this 75, we're going to be just counting two notes per. Bum 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 bum. Now for the purposes of this video, I'm just gonna be playing the first line or we're gonna be here all day trying to get through this. So that's at 75, but pick the tempo that works for you. If that was too quick, then go ahead, slow it down. If that feels maybe a little slow and you can go a little quicker, go ahead and bring the tempo up. But make sure it's well controlled and played nice and clean with all of the embellishments correct, all the grace noting correct. So we're gonna keep it at 75 right now and we're gonna go in and we're gonna play it pointed. On this one, I have it written out pointed in the exercise. On your music, you might just need to try to imagine all those dots and cuts, or you can just pencil them in lightly and erase them later, maybe make a couple of photocopies, do something that works for you in your world. And you can see there, long, short, long, short, long, Pointed, every one of them. Adjust the metronome to whatever you need it to be and write it down. Write down these speeds so that you know where you're at. It's gonna be important here in a second. Moving on to snapped rhythms now. So again, this is where the first note is short, second note is long. For many folks, they find these snapped rhythms to be the more difficult of the three, if you will, methods that we're playing to get under control. So take your time, keep it clean and accurate, and write down the metronome speed it's at when you have this under control. So now we have three speeds written down. They might all be the same, they might be different. I want you to take the lowest of the three speeds and I want you to add 20, 25% to that speed. So if we're at 75, 25% is gonna be mm, about 95. So the metronome now has been upped and we're going back to the round version and we're gonna try it at this new faster tempo. Now, why are we jumping the tempo so much so quickly? Well, in playing the pointed version and playing the snapped version, you've actually already figured out how to make all of the different note changes in this tune at a much faster speed, at probably 50% faster to be honest, because when you're playing it pointed, you had to learn how to make every change to the second note in each grouping quickly. And in the snapped one, you had to learn how to do it with the first note in each group quickly. So you've already kind of, your brain has already had to do a lot of sorting out of things. And I think now is a great time to see how much of that sunk in. And with many of my students, I find that once they can play the pointed and rounded versions well, cleanly and accurately, we can bump the metronome up, go to the rounded version, up that metronome this much and still have it be clean and accurate. <laughs> Play through the whole tune. If it's a little messy, down the metronome just a little bit and try it again. If it's a lot messy, maybe half the amount. You know, if you went up by 20 beats per minute, maybe take it down 10 beats so that you've only upped it a little bit. It, the most important thing is to keep it clean. It's a lot to take on. These are more advanced tunes and there's more going on. Now let's do it. Pointed. Just as before, if at that speed it's not clean and you're struggling, find a metronome speed that works for you where you can continue to play it accurately and cleanly. Now it's moved on to snapped. Again, find the metronome speed that works for you. Now, look through all the speeds you've written down for this new improved tempo. Take the lowest of those speeds and again, add about 25% to it and go back, try it round again and see if you can get it even a little bit more quick. I'm gonna take this up to 115 now. You might find this third round, that might be a little aggressive. You might not be able to bump the tempo as much or you might find that you're not able to take it any more quickly. It might take a few days at that new tempo. 
it might not. You might be able to up this more than you think. I've had students using this method double their speed in an hour using this. So it can be super powerful, but make sure you keep it clean. Now let's point it. Move the metronome to wherever you need to be to keep it clean. Snapped. Write all those down, find the lowest speed of the three new tempos, and then add it again if you have time, or maybe call it a day at that point if your fingers and brain are starting to feel frazzled. You know, do what works for you, but we're gonna push it one more time. So once the metronome gets above about 130 beats per minute, it starts kind of driving me bonkers. It starts really clicking quite quickly. And ultimately these reels are counted in two. So we're, I wanna bump this up to say uh, 140. Well, that's pretty quick, but what's half of that? 70, and that's where we're going to be for that half note. So it feels more relaxed, but now there's four notes happening in each one of these, not two. One E and a, two E and a, one E and a, two E and a. Let's go back to round. Again, if that's too quick, bring it down. Pointed. Write the speed down that works for you on that one. Now, snapped. Now, snapped at that speed starts sounding almost silly. We're getting into a, not an unreasonable place to start a reel. 70, 72, that's a great, it's kind of a slow speed for a reel. I don't know if you could really dance to it, but it's still quite lively and fun to play. And we started at 75 and that was subdivided. So what would that be? 37 and a half? So we went from 37 and a half for the half note to 70. Now, I know it's a tune I know and it's just a demonstration. If you're using this method, I want you to write below how much you've been able to up the tempo of a tune in a given practice session while keeping everything clean and accurate. I'd love to hear about it. Now for the next tune, we're moving on to the Ale is Dear, a pointed reel. And again, I'm not talking to the pointed rhythm that we're gonna be doing in the second step here. I'm talking about how the tune is actually, you know, discussed and, and played. But I picked this tune on purpose. One, it's a great melody, but two, it has an awful lot of snapped rhythms in it. When dealing with a pointed tune where it goes back and forth between a pointed rhythm and a snapped rhythm, I like to actually take just a normal highlighter and highlight the snapped rhythms. I highlight the beams underneath and it helps give me a little visual cue that they're coming up and I know they're gonna happen. For this, again, I wanna take this pointed tune and I want to have it round. So in the PDFs below, there is an already round version, so you don't have to worry about trying to figure it out. If you're doing this to your own tune, again, you might feel the need to rewrite it so that it's round. You might be able to just kind of zone out and just look at the overall structure and not notice the dots and the cuts. Eventually, the more you apply this, the easier it's going to be to just take any hornpipe or reel, look at it and be able to play rounded, pointed, snapped, however you want to do it. But at first it is probably going to be a bit tricky, which is why for these examples, I have the music already written out for you. So for this one, we're adding one more step with a pointed reel. We're going to be playing it round, fully pointed, snapped, and then I want you to play the version that you're ultimately going to be playing as well, where it might go back and forth between snapped and pointed. Now, if your Pointed reel has no snapped rhythms. There's no need to, to add that. If it's just fully pointed and there's many reels out there that the it's just pointed throughout and there's no snapped rhythms, then that's fine. That's just kind of like the Mason's Apron where one of the versions was the actual version of the tune. But if your tune's like the Ale is Deer where it goes back and forth, add that kind of combo one, if you will, into this whole method. We've got this back to 75. I'm gonna play through the part, but just one time through. I'm not gonna play the repeat, because again, I'm just trying to demonstrate this. I'm not trying to actually teach you the whole tune. Now pointed. As before, if that tempo that you set for the round version now feels like it's too fast for this pointed version, go ahead and slow down the tempo. Let's move on to snapped.
Find the template that works for you, write it down. Now we're gonna do the actual setting actual there's not really any real version of a tune it's the one that your band is playing or the version you want to play this is the setting i play so we're going to go with that one and again it goes back and forth between pointed and snapped rhythms Write the tempo down for that one, and then find out of those four, round, fully pointed, snapped, and the real setting, which one is the slowest, and add 20, 25% to the, the metronome. We're gonna go back to 95, and start it round again. Then point it. then snapped. Now the actual setting. Now look at the four tempos you have written down. If they're all the same, cool. If they're not, that's fine too. Find the slowest of those four, add about 20, 25% to that, and repeat the whole process again. Then point it. Then snapped. Then finally, the actual setting. And just for completion, we're gonna take this now down to 70. But we're no longer subdividing it. We're counting the actual beat now. When you go from subdividing the beat to taking that away, you might wanna do a couple one E and a two E and a one E and a two E and to get that subdivided four in your head. Then point it. Then snapped. Then the actual setting. One of the other things I love about this is it makes me really think about some of the classic tunes I've played for years differently. Hearing Mason's apron pointed and snapped, it, it kind of opens up a lot of new options for melodies you might not have thought of before. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you got something out of the video, it'd be great if you gave it a like, maybe subscribe to the channel, maybe even head over to my Patreon where a completely voluntary contribution every month uh, can go a long way to helping me make videos like this. I also give Skype lessons if you want more personalized instruction. Go ahead and head over to www.mattpiper.com or email me at the email address right there and we'll get you going. All right, everybody, I'm Matt Willis and until next time, cheers. Cheers.